everybody. Thank you for tuning in, listening, watch it. We are the real short box. Uh, here with another short box shorty coming at you. My name is Donald. I'm here with Mr. Chris and Mr. Kevin. Thank you all for tuning in for this, and thank you guys for being here. The first part of what we expect at Comic Con 2022, and now this is what we got <laughs> from Comic Con 2022. Now, Kevin and I both were there. Uh, I was there as a partial exhibitor, so I had uh, some insight to the floor prior and post uh, building up and tearing down. Uh, and Kevin was there as a professional, obviously, with the press and everything. And then Chris, uh, sadly, did not get to make it. So Chris is kind of on the outside looking in. But it's good because he can bring a perspective of a fan and what did, you know, he want to see or what did we think of things that he can ask us some questions and stuff. So uh, really quickly, just before uh, Chris gets started on his multitude of questions, that I'm sure he has. I just want to say that Comic-Con was a little odd this year and i'm just gonna leave it at that and then we'll 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 move into that oddness as as the questions develop so chris what 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 are, what are you chomping at the bit to ask us um i guess uh was the coolest person you met uh at comic-con this year Oof, that well i mean i guess the coolest but like to you what was the most important or like most like um satisfying like meat at, at comic-con every morning i get up and i go into the bathroom and i see myself in the mirror and i think man this is like probably the most important person i am going to meet today tomorrow and maybe for the rest of my life so uh, that didn't change during the comic-con i i was really looking forward to seeing myself each and every day and it was a delight let me tell you tell me about somebody besides you Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, well, I guess Ben Bishop would be a good one. Uh, ben Bishop, uh, let's see, Tom Waltz, uh, Kevin Eastman was a big one. Uh, Chris, you're a Turtles fan. Uh, Kevin and I both got to meet and talk to Kevin Eastman. Uh, you know, we gave him our, uh, our podcast card, said we'd love to have him on. You never know. Cross your fingers. I think we do have a good chance with Tom Waltz, the writer of The Last Ronin, uh, to get on the podcast. He seemed very enthusiastic about the idea. So he's either an extremely good actor or he was truly excited to be on. Uh, so I, I think that was the case. So we're definitely going to get him on at some point and we'll probably get Ben back uh, on. We had him, if you all recall, during uh, We Can Be Heroes at the We Can Be Heroes comic book shop in Chatsworth back in April, we had him on for like an eight minute segment, uh, a live little podcast where we just did a quick little thing with him. Uh, but we would go more detailed this time. So I would say, yeah, probably the turtle guys. I think that was a big one. Um, pretty cool. Uh, Stan Takai as well. Uh, Stan Sakai, 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 right? Yeah, thanks, guy. yeah. I'm terrible with pronunciations, but, uh, he was there as well with, uh, you know, um, with Yosagi Yojimbo. So I was super excited about that also. So just a cool thing running into some of these guys uh, and getting to talk to them really quickly and getting them to sign a few things. Um, I did get a really cool um, book. It's the last run in hardback. And I did, uh, Kevin, uh, I don't think you... You got this one, but I got everybody to sign this one. Uh, Kevin's showing his, sort of. Put it in front of you. There you go. You can see it very clearly, kind of. It's showing uh, Kevin Eastman on the front of his Leonardo Pop toy, which is really cool. And Why is it so got... shiny? Yeah, because that's like the metallic. metallic that's something? the metallic one, yeah. I got the, the artist uh, version. Uh, of uh, it's the part of the art series from Nickelodeon from Funko. It's this one here, if you can see it. And I got uh, Tom Waltz, the writer of The Last Ronin, to sign it. And then Ben Bishop, I got him to sign it and then do a little remark on it as well. You can see the little turtle. Well, and I think Ben's I have the, the artist of The Last Ronin. Of that. Yeah, they're kind of neat. I thought it was cool. Here we go. Much better. 
Yeah, yes, it's much that. better. There we go. He got it. And also, uh, for Maria, Ben did a little uh, sketch of Mr. Mind, because she's a big uh, Mr. Mind fan from Shazam, Captain Marvel. So he did that, and he put SDCC on it for her. So I thought that was really cool that he had time to do that for her. And, uh, yeah, so, that, you know, there was a lot of fun moments peppered in, I think. Uh, again, though, I do want to get back to the weirdness. Hold on, hold on. Kevin didn't get the answer. Okay. That's true. Uh, you know, person I, well, I was very honored to meet was Larry Houston. He was the executive producer and co-creator of the X-Men animated series from 30 years ago. So, very nice guy. Took, took, took a couple pictures with him. And we may also get a future interview with him as well. Yep, also true. Is he working on the new version of the animated series? I don't think so, but I think he might be like like consulting. Yeah, probably a consultant, but not working directly with it um, or on it per se. Uh, you find that happens a lot uh, with the old schoolers. They're more consultants than, and it's partially because they just don't want to do it, and partially because um, they've got their their toes or their fingers in so many pies. And it's just, you know, they did their toes in so many things. It's hard to do that. So I get that. Very true. All right, yeah. Well, since you, since you guys started your 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 uh, show and tell, why don't you guys talk about what kind of uh, exclusives you might have picked up um, at Comic Con this year? Uh, well, I got this here. Not the show. You can just tell us. Well, I'll show. It's the uh, Mondo. Um, record the album uh vinyl of doom patrol and uh this is of course i think it's mr nowhere i believe is his name from there and it's got all the doom patrol here and then we see calder professor calder back there alone on the back kind of uh and it's really neat guys the uh you just go to mondo.com or Mondo Records. I think it's Mondo.com, and you'll see. Um, these are individually numbered, by the way. This is number 182. So it's a really kind of special thing. And uh, you'll see the the inside, what the vinyl itself looks like. It's white, kind of blue with white, kind of like Mr. Nowhere here on the cover. Kind of got that look to it. So I thought this was really cool. And so I was happy to pick that up. And a few other things, uh, you know, besides the autographs and stuff, I got one of the exclusive, uh, not this one, but I got an exclusive different hardback version of The Last Ronin. Uh, Kevin, what'd you get? Yeah, it's got some nice posters. They got a signed poster. Obviously, the uh, box from the Turtles getting signed. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of cool pins, actually. Like, those like nice little cool collectible pins. And we, one of the best ones was from the We Can Be Heroes, the, the shop that we were helping out there at the con. Their pin looks like this. It's got that really kind of a cool, you know, retro vibe to it. So oh, it's nice. Pretty, it's cool. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you could see it there. Yeah. So I thought that was really neat. And then uh, we went to the Bob's Burgers panel. And they did a two-part episode that was kind of like Blade Runner. It's very strange. It's all in Tina's imagination. Um, and then, of course, Jimmy Jr. Uh, there we go. Kind of see it there. Yeah, you can see it right there, yeah. Yeah. So Jimmy Jr. as basically uh, Harrison Ford's character in it, which was kind of funny. Speaking uh, of panels. Yeah. Uh, were there any panels that really stood out that you got that you attended that really stood out to you this year? Uh, honestly, this is the year that kind of, because of the weirdness of 2022, uh, there was a lot of, I, I just simply like, uh, smaller panels that I just, I don't know, like Hall H, for example, just did not appeal to me. There's what sixty four hundred people that pack into that hall, uh, each each event, each panel, and you have to stand outside and wait usually twenty four hours. You have to sleep outside or something. It just it just doesn't seem worth it anymore. I'm I think I'm we're all at that age right now where we've done all that. We stood outside to watch it, and then we 
like got up the next morning and saw they released all the footage for it online. And we're like, what the shit? I just waited out. I slept in the grass. I slept on cement. Overnight, I had seagulls pecking at me, eating my food. I, I fought off a homeless woman that, that was hitting me with her purse and screaming because she thought I was like somebody's weird uncle or something like that shit just doesn't work for me anymore. And I know it doesn't work for Kevin. So we just decided this year was going to be the year of like small panels of like fun, more intimate style things. Also, so, Ballroom 20. Ballroom 20, I got to see the exclusive premiere of Green Lantern, Beware My Power, which was a pretty good animation. I enjoyed it. Oh, good, good. Yeah. So Kevin got into Ballroom 20. He went to see that. What are some other panels that you saw, Kevin, that you thought were like really cool? Well, ran to Todd McFarlane twice. Uh, the one he was in, I was making fun of, is, you know, instead of Garfield and Friends, it was Jim Lee and Friends. So it was uh, Tom McFarlane made a surprise visit to the DC panel, and then he's, you know, him being the P.T. Barnum of comics, he's just promoting the Batman Spawn comic that's coming out later this year. And it's going to be the biggest selling one of the, of, the, of, the, of the century, you know, so forth and so on. So you know how he's hypes his stuff up. Plus, he's telling people to be speculators to buy early editions early issues of spawn because there's a new spawn movie coming out and they're going to announce it at new york comic-con so chris you go back to new york for new york comic-con you'll see the official announcement of the next spawn movie yeah i have a feeling that's going to be hot trash (laughs) like i could be wrong i'll be surprised if i'm wrong um and i'll be happy to be wrong to be honest i would like for it to succeed but I don't know. Just nothing feels right about it. Maybe copy the HBO series from back in the day. That was good. The, the HBO animated series. Yeah. yeah. What about you? What about you, Donald? Uh, the, well, besides the Bob's Burgers panel, uh, we did a lot of animation. We went to the Primal panel. Uh, that Jen D. Uh, Tur- Turkovsky's or Turkovsky's uh, Primal was fantastic. Uh, they showed a lot of footage uh, from some upcoming episodes uh, in season two. Uh, talked about where Primal's going to go from there. Uh, he actually talked about how he envisioned Primal to be an anthology series instead. So this might be actually the final season of, uh, of uh, what is it? It's uh, Tooth and Spear, I want to say, of the dinosaur and the caveman uh, in their journey. So we'll see if that's the case or not. But he was leaning heavily towards hinting with an anthology. So... It's quite possible that that's what we're going to get after season two or maybe season three if he gets convinced by, um, you know, uh, Cartoon Network or whatever to uh, to uh, keep it going, so to speak. Um, I think it's Cartoon Network. I think I never remember, but it gets also played on HBO Max, too. So there's that. Um, That was really cool. The Bob's Burger one, they just played two episodes, basically the the two parter, which was great because it hasn't aired yet. So I got to see that. Uh, the Rick and Morty panel was, was awesome because it really wasn't about Rick and Morty. It was, and I can never remember the names of them, uh, but it was about the superhero team that formed like a justice league kind of thing that Rick was going to join. And then they just like died immediately. (laughs) They had the cyborg alligator and the universe lady and, uh, this guy with like a cybernetic legs and arms and some shit. And then a, a dude that whistled and then ghost trains would come. It's just dumb, just dumb stuff, but it was fun, and they did hook us up with some really silly masks, so for the rest of the podcast, I can be uh, Morty, if you guys are like, I could do that. I'm not, yeah. No, but it's creepy oh, as hell. Oh, jeez, Rick. Oh, oh, Chris. Oh, jeez. I don't know. What do I do? Oh. <laughs> could do that uh i could also uh, be be rick here hey 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 morty hey hey morty uh, uh um how about we uh we we go on an adventure Sh- shut up shut up this time morty can, can you do that morty chris can you shut up too could do that i could do that the whole time your hot take. I've never seen an episode of that show. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Wow. Well, that was just useless for you. 
<laughs> Thanks for letting me know. Cool, cool. Yeah, like embarrass yourself, and then I'll tell you the truth. Thank you, thank you, thank yeah. you. Uh, we went to a Godzilla panel. That was really cool. Uh, they talked about the future of Godzilla, uh, which led to them talking about a Godzilla arcade game, uh, Pinball McCain game. Was it? Uh, were they talking about like the TV series? Were they talking about the next movie or? No, they were primarily just talking about Godzilla in general in like uh, where they wanted to go with like merchandising and things like that. Oh, okay. um, that was the most most that they were doing about that. Uh, so we got to learn about the new Mondo figures and where they're going with uh, with Godzilla in the future. Um, what they want to do with future pinball games of Godzilla. Uh, Shag was there and was talking about Godzilla art and what they wanted to do with that. And, you know, it was kind of honestly, it was kind of. What I didn't know until I got there was that Funko actually bought Mondo. Yeah, so they they now own Loungefly and they own uh, Mondo. So the back section of the convention center, they made it look like an entire city. And if I had my phone on me, I would show you guys. But they made it look like an entire city, like with a movie theater that was the Funko headquarters area that you could go in. And that's where you got your pops and stuff. And I did get a couple. I got a couple exclusives from Comic-Con pops. Uh, I got the um, the Peacemaker one, and I got the uh, the Toucan, the uh, Pirate Toucan. Now, I almost had Miss Minutes, but somebody else wanted Miss Minutes in the group, and I just, I was like, you know what, take it. It's very large, by the way. It's like this big, the figure. It's like huge. So I was like, I don't need it. You know, it was just kind of cool. But I was like, I, you know, I got Kang behind me here and I thought, you know, he would appreciate it. But not worth it. Not worth it as far as spatial issues are concerned. So I just passed on that. Also, you have to remind, remind him of, not remind him, tell about the animated uh, Grogu. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's a there's a great uh, animated Grogu. I believe uh, we posted it on our uh, Instagram page for the Real Short Box. My next question, right Kevin. And if I did oh. not post it on the Instagram page, uh, I will for the podcast here uh, after this. I'll, I'll get that posted so people can see it. Um, but, yeah, it should be on there. And you can look. It's a little animatronic Grogu, and it looks so freaking real. You know, as real as it can for a creature that doesn't exist, if you know what I'm saying. Was it like animatronic? Yes, it was animatronic. He would move and his eyes would open and he would go in his hands and, and stuff. And, and, and people wanted to touch it. And yeah, based on the video, I couldn't tell if it was a puppeteer in there doing it or if it was animatronic. So I wanted to yeah. ask that. Yep, for sure animatronic because they didn't have the space for a puppeteer or anything. Plus, uh, they were really nervous about people getting near that, near it, with especially with water or anything like that that they would have in their hands uh, or just getting close to it so they didn't want them to grab it or try to run away with it or touch it or anything like that. You can get your picture with it. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I was recording it as a guy was like, oh, oh, you're too close, you're too close. And, of course, you would think it's me that's being told that, but I wasn't. I was recording from kind of far away, but it looked up close. But there was a lady that I cropped out of the shot that was like almost like up on him, like trying to kiss him. It was weird. It was like, this is unnecessary, lady. All right. What was the uh, the craziest thing you guys saw at Comic-Con? Jeez. Uh, well, I mean, the toilets uh, all backed up and the urinals wouldn't flush properly. So that was kind of crazy. Not Not in a good way. I'll tell you that. Um, not a fan oh, of that. Remember the wristband, the water, the, the quote unquote waterproof wristband you had to wear all the way through. So you had to get a wristband that said that you were COVID free and uh, or that you had just uh, gotten your vaccine, you know, and you're, you you were vaccinated. So once you got the wristband, um, you could not get another one to replace it unless your other wristband was gone. And in which case you had to stand back in a long line to get it again. No one wanted to stand in line for it, but people would want a replacement because it would just get all dirty and nasty and shit, and they wouldn't replace it. So everybody was walking around with these really nasty ass, dirty wristbands, and like we were all like bonded by dirty wristbands. It was kind of gross, but like like hospital wristbands or, uh, you know, those kind of like a papery plastic ones, kind of yeah. papery ones. If it was a rubber, oh, oh, the uh, sticker uh, part. Yeah. it would have it would have like made the, more sense if it was a rubber one. That would have made the amusement like, park sense. ones. Ugh. Right. You, yep. You, you yeah. Take it off at night. Put it back on. And the, then... the drink ticket ones, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. The one. Oh, your ID at twenty-one. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, I hate those things. 
Yeah. Uh, and then once the con ended, Kevin immediately got kicked off the floor because uh, he had a professional badge and he did not have an exhibitor badge. And they were like, you got to get out. you got to get out. And he's like, OK, OK, calm down, calm down. You know, I'm just trying to help here. But I guess I'll leave. So he had to leave. He couldn't help break down or anything. Uh, so I helped them break down at the shop. We Could Be Heroes had a booth there in 1901. And uh, they did pretty well for the first time. Uh, you know, I, I was surprised that they got as much talent as they did. They had, uh, I think it's Jenny Kwan, who was, uh, from Avatar, the last airbender. She did, was a voice actor in that. Uh, there was Jason Font, who was the red ranger, uh, from one of the power rangers. Uh, there was, uh, Ian Mackey. Did, did Ben Bishop be signed there too? Uh, yeah, Ben Bishop was there. Ian was there. Ian was from Diabolic, uh, comics from, uh, Daria Bava. Uh, ben Bishop was there from Last Ronin, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I think uh, Tom Walt stopped for a few. Uh, David Avalone was there for a few. Uh, David writes the Elvira comics and stuff like that. Uh, so a lot of talent came through that booth, that small little booth. So I was really surprised that they were able to to bring those people in, but they did, and it worked out really well. Uh, it worked out extremely well, I feel, to to their benefit, and. Um, Everybody had a good time, it seemed, uh, enjoyed themselves. Uh, Kevin and I, you know, we we had a good time as well. Uh, Kevin had toast for breakfast every single day, so that was nice. Very, yeah, Mr. Yeah, Mr. Toast. Very consistent with his with his breakfast. Uh, yeah, yeah, Mr. Toast. I had coffee because I was exhausted. Uh, it's just one of those things where you get done with Comic Con. Uh, that's why. We're actually recording this when we would normally be doing a live show, and we're doing this because we're just so exhausted that we didn't feel we had the energy for a live show, um, but we could record one of these shorties. So it's it's fun. It's kind of an interesting way to do that, but, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. It's, uh, you know, you don't want to – you don't ever want to have a live show and be low energy if you could avoid it. That's the thing. So I was like, let's just take today off, and we'll be back at it, you know, soon. So to speak, we'll be right back. Yeah, between, born, ready to go. Between your Comic Con and my Shakespeare. Yeah, yeah, and then you'll be moving and stuff. It's gonna be a fun time next uh, next week. Let me tell you, sir. But uh, uh, any other questions that you thought of, Chris, or anything? Um, before we go? Well, like, what was what was the numbers like? Was it do you, was it down compared to previous years, or do you think it's got back up to normal? Or so I think there was a lot of people with masks, a ton. It was a mandate inside. Um, but occasionally, you know, people eating food and stuff inside panels and things, they would have their mask down on the bus. Some people just didn't want to wear it. Uh, number wise, overall, I did notice a downtick. Um, yeah. Clear up through Saturday, it was just not that busy on the floor. Uh, Sunday, I got busy on the floor, but that's just because all the panels kind of end early or there's not as much variety. So people want to get on this floor and, and they want to go shopping. Right. So. Yeah, the, out, most of the shops did their best sales on Sunday, uh, and that's just simply because they had more, you know, eyes and ears and feet on the on the ground there inside the convention. But overall, yeah, there was a there was a definite slowdown, a downtick, as far as people attending. People that got tickets, I think, uh, you know, or had tickets from two years ago, decided not to go. And I knew several of those people yeah, that were like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm not going." And it's just because things change. Some people got pregnant, had babies. Some people got married or getting married. Uh, some people just didn't want to risk the health issues uh, because they were going to be going, uh, you know, to visit somebody soon or they, they themselves were immune compromised, stuff like that. Some, you know, some some went to that November show of 2021 instead. Right. And you could switch that out and use that uh, that ticket that you would have had for that instead. So, you know, there was a mixed bag there, too. So a lot of variables that took place. Uh, but overall, yeah, kind of a downtick. But I will say. As long as we don't see them saying there's a huge spike in COVID, you know, cases or even monkeypox uh, because of the convention, I think that they'll mark that as a as a success, and they'll be ready to push forward for next year. Um, you know, barring any crazy incidents or anything. Yeah, anything unforeseen. Hopefully, next year, 2023, will be relatively back to normal. Right. Yeah. Which is when Kevin and I just. Hopefully I'll be able to join you next 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 for the next one. Yeah, yeah, that'll be a fun one for sure next year, uh, 2023. But yeah, overall, I think 2022 Comic-Con was a success. Uh, I think everybody got what they wanted out of it. 
Uh, those that went enjoyed themselves. Cosplayers enjoyed themselves. Uh, you saw more creativity with the cosplaying as far as the integration of the masks and stuff. A lot of characters that you normally um, would see people as you didn't see because it required a face mask now, and that would be part of ruining part of the costume. So you didn't see that shit ton of moon nights. I'll tell you that right now. That's because the whole face could get covered, and they didn't. They can't tell if you're wearing a mask underneath, you know. So shit ton any, of those. Any cosplaying from you guys this weekend? Uh, uh, Julio's son was going to dress up as uh, Snake Plissken, uh, but he forgot his eye patch, so that didn't happen. Um, and Kevin and I did not dress up. Uh, I'm not ready for that yet. Uh, you know, maybe I'll get back in fighting shape here, uh, for the fall when we record, uh, a Blue Beetle, uh, episode. Um, but for now, no, no, no cosplay right now. Yeah. Uh, although Kevin did, did consider it. He did consider cosplay. Um, but... Ultimately, it didn't work out. He couldn't get into the leotard. No, didn't work out. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's going to do it for us. I know this is uh, kind of a short box shorty longy, uh, but uh, I just wanted to go kind of over a uh, big thing about it. Uh, the food at the convention still sucks. So there's that. And expensive. Uh, keep, keep that in mind. It's expensive. And the nachos, yes, they'll give you diarrhea. And everybody that was in the bathroom will attest to that. So don't eat them. Just don't have the nachos, guys. Don't be dumb. Don't have the nachos. Bring your own food. Yeah, yeah, if you can. Or go out and eat someplace. Yeah, take some time away. Enjoy all that San Diego has to offer. Because if you don't, I certainly will. I'll be at Giardelli's eating ice cream every day. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you for tuning in, guys. This has been another Real Short Box Shorty. My name is Donald. I'm Chris. My name is Kevin. And if we don't see out and about at, uh, you know, anywhere anytime soon, uh, perhaps if not at the convention hall, we'll see you at the fun, joyful, and always wondrous comic book shop.